Thank you for staying with PLOS TV Africa. This is Off the Press. We take a look at the papers and make sense of the headlines with the help of an analyst. Uh, we are joined uh, by Bolaho Olujede, a public affairs analyst. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Good morning to you. All right, let's start with the Punch newspaper this morning. Expectedly, it's the COVID-19 but they're took it, um, taking it um, from another angle, evacuation. 72 Nigerians, 111 other Africans in China test positive. A Lagos health worker dies in Ekiti. 78 persons isolated. Governments agree on two-week interstate lockdown. Kanu stops tests. I think there is an update on that already. Everything has gone back. Um, the place was fumigated, according to um, the Ministry of Health. Okay, still on the front page of the Punch newspaper, at the top of the masthead, we have my under fire as government slams government house. As gov slams government house journalist with live ban. I'll take that again. Umai on the fire as Gov slams government house journalists with life ban. Rising inflation signifies tougher times ahead. That's according to LCCI NECA, that's N E C A, and ASBON. FG to repatriate 60 Nigerians freed from Tanzanian prisons. And Telecos battle congestion, suspend potting, seek spectrum sharing. Let's go to the bottom of the paper now and see what's there. There you have it. Oil crash may warrant production halts. That's NMPC speaking. Lagos probes woman's death during child bed after punch report. We also have police apprehend Abidjan returnees in Ibadan. And just above it, you're looking at headsmen have driven us from our village. That's Ondo community. You find details on page seven of the paper. Oshu housewife battered by policemen demands cops prosecution. And then three new cases are Togo returnees intercepted at border. That's uh, from Ogun State. All right, Bolaho, let's bring you in. Which of these headlines would you want to pick on? Should we start with the screamer now, the evacuation of 72 Nigerians and others from China um, testing positive? Uh, well, it's a, it's a good place to start. Um, and I, now that we have gone back to those days, when we will say, oh, when you come back into the country, you go and self-isolate. Uh, Self-isolate is not going to work in this kind of an instance. As they are coming into the country, the government ought to have made a provision, which I believe is the current situation, a provision for isolation. So they just go from their aircraft into isolation. They don't even enter the town at all. You know, so I, I want to believe that is how it will play out with these people. Uh, other countries are evacuating their citizens. If our citizens want to come home, we don't have an option. We have to go bring them. But we just have to follow the protocol as laid down by cities uh, so that we can, we can uh, shield the populace from contamination. Okay, which other uh, headline would you want to take on? There was one about the uh, uh, inflation. Yes, Food that's inflation. rising inflation signifies tougher times ahead. Yeah, if, if you look at the February figures that were released, or was it my figure? I think it was February figures that were released. Uh, it showed we had um, a high inflation. It was higher than what we have had in about 20 months or thereabout. You know, and that trend is likely to be sustained. And the reason is very obvious. Um, yesterday, the governors' forum decided that they're going to be they're going to shut down interstate movement. Don't forget that if you take a place like Lagos, most of what we eat in Lagos come from outside of Lagos. So if we shut down interstate movement and those things are not able to come into Lagos, maybe they will make an exception for food anyway. I don't know how that is supposed to play out. But if they don't make an exception for food, um, the prices are going to go really up. 
uh, this time around. So we might be expecting an inflation number because the food inflation is a chunky part of the total inflation figure itself. So if we can't get food into town, the prices of the ones available will go up and we will have a higher inflation again. So that problem is still going to linger for a while. All right, let's go to the Guardian newspaper and see what it's saying. This morning, the big one is, not in Gov's begin expulsion of emergencies over coronavirus. And then it has uh, three riders for you there. Um, emergencies from Kanu, Kaduna, returns 40 to Kebi. Uh, Senator seeks FG's help for Kanu in, on COVID-19. That's uh, some for you. Uh, Katsina receives 4, um, 435, I beg your pardon. Um, Katsina receives 435 emergencies from Kanu. All right. We also have other headlines. Uh, one of them is how oil subsidy removal may create more problems for Nigeria. Stakeholders query role of PEF. Suggest ways to make policy work. At the bottom of the paper, we have why COVID-19 cases are rising by presidential task force. That would be an interesting read. El Refai recovers, says, I wouldn't wish my enemy to contract COVID-19. Certainly, <laughs> no one would. Okay, we have another one here. Nigeria gets first journalist testing positive for coronavirus. I think that's in Adamawa, but you might need to read the paper in detail to get details. Um, Hubble lockdown of COVID-19. Solution to a pandemic? That's a question on science and health uh, from the Guardian newspaper. Well, uh, over to you. Okay, we have the uh, return of our Marjorie back to their state of origin. Um, I, I, I don't know how exactly that is supposed to solve any problem. If you if they are already infected in your state and you move it to move them to another state, honestly, I, I think it's a messy, messy affair. We left the issue of our Marjorie for too long, for too too long, and now we're trying to you know, find some patch patch approach to, to fixing it. It, it, it. it doesn't work like that. So what Kano is doing, I, I, I hope all the northern state governors are carried along with it. So that even when these emergencies are moved from one state to another, the state receiving them is aware they are coming. Just that not just that somebody comes, packs some people, take them to one place and just drop them there. That way, the, the, the receiving state can take ownership of their marriages that have been returned to them, and uh, the isolation process can be followed through. It means that each of those states needs to make preparation for where to isolate these people when they bring them into the state. So that is a very critical part of this returning of uh, our marriages back to their home state. All right. Um, I also like to talk about the... Uh, oil subsidy. There, there's something about oil subsidy and the uh, PEF. Okay. I don't think we'll have a better time to remove oil subsidy than now. As a matter of fact, there's no subsidy at the local anyway because of the current price of oil in itself in the international market. So this is a time to do away with that black hole called subsidy. It's a black hole of unaccountability and it has been there for such a long time. Now that the oil price has crashed, is the best time to get rid of it. However, the, that news item mentioned the issue of PEF. Now, that's the equalization. Now, government is saying via PEF that because uh, someone has to move fuel from Lagos to Kano or Lagos to Borno, that those transportation effects should be compensated so that fuel can, can, uh, can be sold at about the same price in all parts of Nigeria. The, the, in the first instance, the PEF concept has failed totally because, well, in spite of PEF, never sold for the same price in parts of uh, uh, Nigeria. The price in Kano, the price in uh, Bono, even the price in the East are different. What you have is that a few state capitals 
sell price at the control price of 145, or I think it's 123.25 now, from time immemorial. So PEF still remains some sort of subsidy. It will remain a whole of unaccountability in that space. So we need to get rid of PEF as well as the subsidy. Everything in totality. Remove the PEF. All right. Let's do the run by 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 by. by. Let's look at the Nigerian Tribune now. The big one here is Govs adopt two weeks interstate lockdown. That's uh, one of the big stories from yesterday. Uh, call for decentralization of COVID-19 response. You find details on page four of the paper. FG states LGs share 780 billion naira for March, may get to zero allocation for June. Uh, that's on page two of the paper. More headlines on the Tribune. Brent crude oil price hits 21-year low as at $16 per barrel. Nigeria recorded crude oil gas sale of $434 in January. That's according to the NNPC. After four weeks, El Rufai recovers from co coronavirus. COVID-19 spreading like wildfire, presidential task force states. Nigeria records 91 new cases, total now 873. Not in govs to repatriate uh, Marjorie's to states of origin. That's another one that we just uh, looked at uh, from the Guardian newspaper. Uh, we have ASU reject submission of BVN as condition for payment of withheld salaries. Cano testing centers suspends operation over lack of kits. There is an update to that story already. And then we have Oya COVID-19 approach holistic long-sighted. That's a long day speaking. A couple of writers to that story. Uh, Gbolaho, you want me to pick for you or you want to go ahead and take one that you really like to speak on? Pick for me. For me, I'll take it. Okay. Uh, governors adopt uh, two weeks uh, interstate lockdown. Uh, I want to get your thoughts on that, calling for the decentralization of COVID-19 response. Do you think that's a wise decision at this time? The decentralization will mean a whole lot of coordination. After you, you decentralize, you, you take some commands, some parts of Nigeria as well, uh, you will now need coordination. Are those other places ready for this decentralization? Do we, have we worked out the structure for the decentralization? And that is very, very important. I understand their concern. Nigeria is a big place. Now, if you want quicker responses to most of the issues we're having, it is better we take those things closer to the people. But then, while you decentralize, you must have an effective system of reintegrating so that those decentralization, as far as the center is concerned, they don't feel the effect of the decentralization because all information feed into the center in real, in real time. So they are able to know if you call the center, it will be able to tell you what is going on in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven other centers that is being coordinated. All right. If we can work that out, it is perfect. The nation is up next. Uh, the big one here is governors, okay, interstate lockdown for two weeks. That seemed to be running um, across a board this morning, the lockdown for two weeks. And inside, you have a whole lot of riders for you. Equity records first debt. Uh, Damoa State gets index case. Um, we also have others. El Rufai uh, relieves battle against virus is another one on the front page of the nation. Outrage as governor's bars report, reporters from government house. Uh, the oil price issue is also captured here. ASU rejects BVN condition for salary payment. Uh, movement of coronavirus patients banned. I, I don't know if uh, you've spoken on the movement, the banning uh, coronavirus patients from uh, state to state, uh, but I would like you to speak on ASU rejecting the BVN condition for salary payment. Uh, some are saying the move by uh, the presidency to go ahead and pay those who had, refu who had refused to join the uh, payroll uh, system that was introduced um, it's a good thing, but now we're hearing another one. What's your thought? <laughs> uh, well, ASU 
Some members refuse to join the IPPIS for, for the reasons they have given, which, in my opinion, are untenable. Or don't let me say they are untenable. I think there are things that could be worked out. There is no basis for outright rejection of IPPI, in my opinion. Now, some people were not paid February and March, and the government has gone ahead to say, okay, look, let's pay these people, but provide us your BVN. And they are still resisting the provision of the BVN, which means they believe that the BVN is probably still going to be used to put them on the uh, 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 IPPI. So that nexus is something that needs to be worked out. It's only that right now the number one problem in the country is COVID. Otherwise, um, we, we will apparently everybody has been forgotten that that's what's been on strike, and that the IPPIS problem has, has lingered. I tried that's not been resolved uh, until the the president is now saying, okay, pay them. So I think by the side, while all this is going on, um, it, we we. Meetings are being held. We could still continue to have discussion along this line so that we can resolve that matter by the side. It's not a central matter for them. But we still need to deal with it. I don't know why they don't want their BVN. The BVN, they provide it to the banks and to uh, other people that want to pay them. Why don't they want to provide it to the government? All right, uh, please recap your thoughts for us on the ban on interstate movement of COVID-19 patients. That's part of the decision that was taken by the governors. You know, the, some of the cases that are extending to other states were actually imported from some states. Uh, you have the case of Adamawa, uh, which was imported by someone from Kano. Someone came from Kano into Adamawa, and that was how Adamawa got his own uh, index case. So the, the governors are getting worried about this movement. And here is it. If I'm doing all my best in my state, to keep things in control. But I can easily have people come in from other states and bring these things in. There, there will be a problem. So I, I agree with them that we need a period um, in which we suck this out so that that interstate uh, transfer of possible COVID cases can be better managed. I'm not sure if it is two weeks uh, uh, lockdown of interstate movement that will serve this. But there has to be some sort of restriction on interstate movement. Otherwise, um, even a state cannot be said to be in control of its own COVID situation if other states can move COVID patients into the, into the state. Okay, let, let's see what we can However, do with the papers that are left. For, for. Uh, okay, apologies for um, interrupting you like that. Okay, let's see what we have with Daily Trust newspaper. The front page has um, as push for 110 billion naira for discos intensifies. No template to reach poor Nigerians with electricity. Uh, that's um, on the front page. You're looking at it now. Uh, we also have uh, two writers to read. Free power not possible. Impacts will be bleak. That's according to Aspards. Absence of consumer fund, huge gap. Kind of situation remains worrisome. That's the federal government. Why CEOs are pushing for early restart of economy? Governors declare 14 days, 14 day interstate lockdown. Uh, those are some of the headlines for you. And, of course, for our Muslim brothers and sisters, Ramadan, look for New Moon today. That's the Sultan speaking. You'll find details on page six of the paper. FG retests Chinese medical experts today. Business is thriving under lockdown at FCT suburbs. Why we're happy business is thriving. We're worried that social distancing is an issue. Uh, Bolaho. What's your it's, take it's, on the, elec uh, the electricity issue? No templates to reach poor Nigerians with electricity, especially now where people are home and most of them need some form of uh, distraction to occupy their minds. Uh, I, I think it's not absolutely true. I understand what they're trying to say. It's not as if you can find the poor. Um, I mean, there are poor that, are, that live within the affluent of the middle class, you know, as well. But if we are talking of the lowest rung of the ladder, if that is uh, if what our focus is, the truth is we know where they stay. 
If you talk about Ekoyi, is it poor people that live there? The answer is no. If you go to Jorabadia, is it poor people that live there? The answer is yes. So in Lagos, if you take it as an example, we know where the poor live. So significantly, whatever we want to do to reach the lowest rung of the ladder in a place like Lagos, and I believe in every other city, we know where the poor live. Um, maybe to now constrain the power to do, and, and think of think of it, they don't consume much power. That's the truth. They don't run the air conditioners all over the open and have several other things that are mega consumer of electricity. So I believe that to a certain extent, if we want to give the poor light, we know where they live and we can give them light. All right. That's that's my opinion. Thank you very much, Belaho, for your time with us. Thanks for having me. I trust you're keeping safe. I'm trying to do that by every means. All right. Do take care and we'll see you soon. All right. It's a wrap on Newspaper Review this morning. We're back again tomorrow with all the headlines for you. In the meantime, do the needful. Stay home. Be safe. I'm Felicity Izewiki.